Just doing a quick audio check to start. Hello. All right, hang on. Let's see if that's working. Hello? All right, that seems fine. Okay. So, let's have a chat, shall we? Whilst I boost this up. Okay, so I am going to be looking at the new free play options today. If I uh, start us up. Okay, so we've, we're into the beta, we're about to introduce a new free play menu, uh, but it's also got a few new options and features. I'd be surprised how long the menu took to put together. But the idea is that, um, that you can select, uh, it should be a lot easier to set up a free play game. Uh, something, right, and so I'm going to be uh, in this stream. I'm going to be. Hang on, I haven't. I need to edit the stream info. Free play testing. Okay. Okay. So, hopeful. Right, Raptor. Good to have you with, it, with us. Okay, so this build I'm hoping to get out later today, but if, if, we, if we come across too many issues, I'll push that back till tomorrow. Um, and as in get it out on the beta branch, I don't want to release this without being beta tested. The saving functionality still doesn't work in free play. I haven't started work on that yet. I probably won't start for a couple more weeks. Um, and there's other function that there's other stuff I want to do yet, like uh, make a new free play map, which I haven't done yet. Yeah, Expert Archer, good to have you there. Good to have you with us. But yeah, I've been working on. Um, I was, as you should be able to hear, I've got my my de decent microphone working again. Thank God. So there should be some less background noise. Should be less background noise. Um, okay, so I'm going to set up a weird game where I should be massively likely to win. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, I've noticed a bug already. Great. <laughs> Great. <sighs> right. <laughs> well, the the menu or me. <laughs> I'm going to say hi and hope you're doing well. 
yeah, we're all, we're, it's all going fine. Um, this the the free play menu that I'm showing you has taken a lot longer than I've hoped. But then, so do randomized caverns. Um, Oh, there's something I forgot to do, which was randomized caverns leaf cutter. I wanted to give them leaves if they're a leaf cutter. Okay. Uh, I won't have a leaf cutter on this map actually. Uh, so it's a 2v1v1 on Hunter. Right, I have no idea whether that'll work because I, I did the stuff for, for, my, for it earlier and then I haven't uh, tested it at all. Um, map appropriate creatures on embankment with randomized caverns. Okay. This should be an interesting test. So it's me and a computer versus an, another enemy and another enemy. The computer is cheating massively, so. Let's see how we do. Show us the other icons. Oh, the, um, the icons on the left are basically just the other options so this is colonies so that's setting up colonies like this this one's um environmental uh environmental difficulty so it's things like choosing whether it's ramp ramp over time and those sort of things uh, that's victory conditions this one is oh, what's that that's level setup so that's like the map um such that is uh, creature selection and that is uh, landmark selection um, unfortunately I've started the game so I can't <laughs> I can't click on them it's at the minute it's uh, it's loading uh, but if you've got any questions about it let me know uh, so new up options available to the player is randomized caverns which should randomize your underground with circular caverns around the place um, there's uh, you can prevent enemy colony enemy colonies and you being able to enter other colonies at all um, there's also uh, you can also select ubers now so in the um in the creature selection, there's a section for Ubers uh, where you can choose which Ubers you want to spawn. I mean, I've, I'm on map appropriate, so the Ubers will just be the um, uh, the rainforest Ubers. I just noticed. I'm set to counterpart and it's sharing leaf cutter. I oh, know I've said that before. In counterpart needs to grey it out. I don't know why it's not doing. Maybe counterpart's broken. Ah, oh, we'll see. That's what the testing's for, eh? That is why we test. I went to the opticians the other day and they're giving me a stronger prescription which is it's it's great it's it definitely better um but these new gra glasses around my nose is driving me mad i need to get used to them i'm assuming i need to get used to them Yeah, it, it's when you change map in the engine, it um, takes ages.
when you're actually playing the game, you press start and it instantly comes up. Okay, am I? Society is in yes, I am. The camp, okay. It must grow quickly if it is to survive. All right. There's a few other optimizations I've added. Um, so, because it's randomized caverns, there'd have normally been a cavern there, but there there isn't on this. Um, something. Hang on, I'm getting glare on the screen. Uh, so I'll probably restart this so it re-randomizes the caverns. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. Um, basically, the way the randomized caverns work is they they select a random tile underground. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's just a, it's nothing. Um, they select a random tile underground. Um, and they they then check whether that tile can be a cavern. Then if it can be, they select a random size based on how far they are, they are away from your queen and a, a amount of danger. So the further away it is from your queen, the more dangerous the caverns become. Um, however, there's a funny... There's a funny issue that can sometimes... Uh, it's meant to give you a couple of caverns right next to you that are that don't have any enemies in. However, if it doesn't give you any caverns near you, it doesn't do that. So I'm going to note down that... I'm going to stop stop running it, and I'll go back into the editor. Um... Uh, what is it I want? I want the force and enemy free cavern. At least one. Probably two you want a force. But yeah, it's no fun if you it's no fun if you don't get any air. Uh, nearby caverns that are empty because you need you need the empty ones to um to get yourself started an optimization i've put in i've yet to see how much difference it's going to make but you should notice it when enemies are dying a lot basically when enemies die new ones spawn from home which causes the new that causes the egg to pop um which has caused a particle effect and some physics with the egg being thrown. What I've done is I've prevented that from happening if the player isn't looking at the underground, at that specific underground. So if you're on the surface, when your ants hatch, they won't hatch with an egg explosion. Uh, and if when enemy colonies ants hatches, if you're not looking at them, they won't they won't hatch with an egg explosion. It's just a little um, a little saving to save a load of particle effects and. Uh, and such, it, it made it. It's going to make a difference at the start of free play when all the enemy colonies' free ants are hatching. Um, you'll notice they. Uh, you'll notice it a little bit quicker. No, no, the AI doesn't. It doesn't affect the AI's base. I'm. I'm I won't. I won't. I'm not going to be giving the AI caverns until. Until we, in in, until we implement the more complicated version of that. But it's done it again. It's not giving me any cabins right next to me. Uh, yeah, so the, see, uh, it hasn't touched the AIs underground at all. Whereas it's completely redone mine. I'm going to cancel a few times because I haven't built that force 
forced cavern thing in. A forced nearby cavern thing in. So I'm going to restart until I get some food near me. There we are. That'll do. That's enough food. Yeah, there's two little the queen areas there. Raised her first brood. Oh, three actually. These loyal subjects will lay the foundations of what could one day be a great subterranean empire. Right, so ah, uh, there's another thing I need to do. Okay, I'm just noting down the little. They're all little things so far, but okay, so I need to remove the point. <laughs> On the um, remove point on victory condition. Okay, so this is something that's been added. Um, so if you'll notice, it now says your team, your team Uber kills, Uber's killed. Your team U uh, Uber, right. I need to change the text there again. So that needs to say your team Uber kills. So you can now be defeated by an enemy team uh, beating you to the objective. Uh, and I've, I've, I've enabled that on, on domination. So domination is the one where you've got to get points by killing random enemies on the surface. If an enemy colony beats you to the maximum points, they will win, or an enemy team. And I've enabled it on Uber's killed as well. Um, so it's a race to the victory condition. Uh, so yeah, there's there's that. Uh, let me get playing. Also nerfed the um, <laughs> I've nerfed the AI uh, the easy AI a little. Um, the easy AI will no longer um, decide who it's attacking based on their colony size, so they will just they will do it more randomly. So they might attack a colony that's way bigger than theirs. How much food do I have? Yeah, these caverns are too big for me to take on. Time to get to the surface, I think. Where am I? I also I've, I've done some optimizations with the um, the honeydew as well. That was actually causing a little bit of, of lag. Oh, there's been optimizations with the funnel web nests as well. There's been a, a, bun a bunch of optimizations which should which should affect free play. I I had the I had these on a really high setting, didn't I? Ah. Okay, funnel webs are broken. Whatever the op I didn't do the optimization on the funnel webs. So, there's clearly an issue with that as well. Let's 
second. Warm in here. Oh, it is attacking. No, it's 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 attacking everything but me. Oh no, it's not attacking me. Okay. Get out, get out of that. How much food do I have? Got enough to start building something. Let's, uh, let's bring my... Make a slave, make a chamber. Really got any landmarks near me? You know, I think I need to give the player more food underground. I don't know. I think the randomized caverns need more food. <laughs> they look a bit stingy at the minute, to be honest. Looks like, is the spider still there? No, it's dead. Go, go get the food. Bad starting location for me. I oh, should notice the AI. They should be harvesting from nearby food sources. Maybe not. I don't know. They've gone for that. They've cleared everything else, so. I guess that makes sense. It's something I wanted to do, but I haven't done yet, is. Uh, We've definitely got an ant stuck there. Okay. There's been some optimizations to the markers. Clearly they've not been thoroughly tested yet. One second, I'm just gonna chat to Liam about a couple of these issues just briefly. Mention them to Liam. That ant is still stuck there. Amazingly, I don't know what he changed the system to, but
colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. Oh, there's a new uh, funnel web in the web. <laughs> Fell for the trap. This is a very slow game. Uh, no, no, we're not going anywhere near a rogue beetle. Wait, is there any underground caverns which look edible? If that's, if this is just a, a three devil's coach horse larvae, I probably can take it on. Oh, it's, of course. It's... Oh, combat's off. Oh. At least we'll have some food for respawns, eh? An idea is to make sure you and AI have starting food, like a fish nearby or a flower. Yeah, would be an option, because I already do that with leaf cutters. So leaf cutters always have leaves nearby. And that was a way to make up for the... Um, But maybe the underground, f the, maybe the underground food is what should solve it. See, the thing is, randomized caverns introduces a new kind of layer of uncertainty in your starting food. Because before I could control it to the extent where the player had to dig out, but they always had, I could always be sure they had food to start with. But that is way too. Busy. It's definitely more that can be done here. I think the caverns need to hold more food. I think there needs to be more of them close to you. So, let's get it down. Caverns, more food. Tons of suggestions. See, that doesn't look too bad because they're small markers. Hang on. I'm just going to have a nosy just in case because that is pretty far from the queen. So, with such few markers, these should be big old enemies. But they're not Devil's Coach Horse normals. Oh no, Rogue Beetle B. Okay. Okay, so I don't think the um, the scaling's working on these. Oh, am I being attacked? Yeah, I'm being attacked. Hopefully my computer will come to my aid. So you should have a huge army. Danger. 
And he's not helping. He should definitely be helping by now. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Just need to survive long enough for him. Um... The queen is in imminent danger. The colony is starving. There is not enough food to feed the new brood. Go on, Royal Guard. God save me. Yeah, they are. Looks like uh, my ally is actually going to head them off at the pass. So we stop getting messages. I'm safe, you can go now. <laughs> no, he's determined to keep me safe. I will shield you! I oh, mean, never really got big enough. Um, okay, I've got quite a list of things that I want to change now. I'm gonna stop the game, run it again. <laughs> it's like a big triangle here. I can see why my allies stayed though. They're still attacking me. Both of them are now. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Sorry, coming back to chat. All right, half nerd. Good to have you with us. Nice queen in danger music. <laughs> doodly, 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 doodly. It's a bit mad that. Rip. Oh, if attack is disabled for nest group, does that mean the royal guard will not initiate combat? I don't think so. The oh, maybe. No, because they the royal guard don't behave like normal colony creatures. They're 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 this equivalent to um. Like be the beetles and that sort of thing on the map. They just literally attack anything that's nearby. You can't stop them attacking. But these these are uh, my allies. My allies are saving me. His nest seems to be uh, doing quite well. Unfortunately, mine's completely destroyed. Looks like the enemies decided to leave. The colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. Oh, these two aren't allied, are they? <laughs> I forgot that. These are the two colonies aren't allied. quite fun just to watch these games. I haven't really done anything in ages. Um, okay, I've got a list of things that 
I want it, I want it, I want to change already. Why are the spitters go idle spit? I don't think my ally is going to win this one. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. He's fighting a battle on multiple fronts, though. The green player seems to be doing really well. But there hasn't been any Ubers spawning. Uh, it's, it's a while till they do spawn, isn't it? Although I think 11 is a bit of a tall order. The queen is in imminent danger. Right. I think we probably want to reduce the numbers, number of Ubers spawning. No, th increase. Increase Uber spawns more with Hunter. Uh, I think I want to disable colony attacks with Hunter because if you if you if you're on Hunter mode and playing against other colonies, I don't think you really want to be dying to. Um, To the two AI colonies attacking you. That's for conquest, really. So I might disable their uh, entering other colonies. I mean, you can turn it back on if you want, but basically the default option will be off. The rapid fire gets stuck after killing the target. Yeah, it's it was a. Uh, there was a change I made to the rapid fires, which um, which it removes their get it get into fire mode and get out of fire mode or severely reduces it. But I think a side effect caused it caused them to get stuck. And not realise their abilities ended. So yeah, it's uh Well I haven't noticed it happen this fight. I... The colony is starving. There's not enough food. You notice the rapid fires get into and out of combat a lot quicker now, but But yeah, I, I've, I've I've heard that it is possible for them to get stuck. Well, I haven't noticed it happen in in the in the editor, but it might might be that it only happens on the live build. <laughs> yeah, good idea. I've only got one wood ant, but no one one worker. But you are right. Whilst the AI is defending me so fiercely. I think they'll defend me for a while yet. I suppose they've got plenty of other ants anyway, so they, they're doing stuff with the other ants.
But I lost my worker. No, no, he's on his way. Is will the AI defenders steal the food? They shouldn't at the minute because I'm pretty sure when I've got them in defense mode, I turn off gathering. When they're defending an ally, they turn off gathering. However, when they go home, that they might steal the food. Whenever that is, we have a look at their. Um, What's their colony ID? If we have a nose at their marker placement AI. Colony ID two. Zero. Two. Okay. So. I have a look at this. Wait for them to flash through this again. I went down here. I don't think they're attacking. They definitely haven't gone home. It runs this every 15 seconds or so. Oh. Okay. So now it thinks it's attacking. 135 seconds. Okay, so it must have, um, yeah. Should get to here. Yeah. Oh, there's an interesting bug. <laughs> okay. So what's happened here is it's got its list of enemies entered. But I believe that's its own its own colony. So basically it's registering itself as there being enemies in my nest. So it's never going to leave <laughs> until it leaves. Okay, I think that's the case. I mean, let's have a look at one. Uh, would Ant be slow C31?
find it. There. Okay, so really the enemies enter entered doesn't need to be tracked if you're an ally. Okay, so tracking No need to register allies entering nest. <laughs> yeah, I must protect the player against myself. Yeah, it's... It's a, it's just a simple bug based on what the system was originally built for. I mean, the the tracking getting creatures entering your nest was built for. Um, it's it was built for the campaign, for. I can't believe it was. But yeah, needs updating. We need to basically do an allied check as they enter. Okay, so we've got a nice juicy list. Of changes that need to be made including a couple of horrific bugs with the marker and the spider can't stop fiddling with glasses because it's annoying me um, so let's get to it eh? let's get to it I'll probably start by fixing that one because it's fresh on my mind. Stop. Yeah, it's an interesting bug, that one. So this is the bit of code that runs. Here it is. The blueprint that runs. Someday we'll turn all these blueprints into C++ code and we'll get an efficient, a decent efficiency saving from it. But not whilst we're still making massive changes to it. Okay, okay. so if track enemies entered is true. This is the creature. That's, no, that's a pawn. Oh. 
Yeah, that's the creature. Am I allied with? I mean, I like with all non colony. Right. So if it comes back as true, we don't register it. If it comes back as false, we do. So it's the, the creature that is transferring. Does a check on the tile grid that it's transferring to if it's allied with it. If it is allied with it, it doesn't add it to the list of enemies that have entered. Okay. Right. Coming back to chat. Take a shot each time John messes with his glasses. <laughs> no. I would not advise that. Oh, by the way, there is a bug in the trail path visual, I think, on mission 3 to 1. Can make my ants go through a very narrow passage, but the trail path visual will display a different path. It can reach the target tile without passing through the passage. All right, interesting. It's been the huge grip spiders there and the adjacent platitude to the north I think ok uh, mark it down uh, 3, 2 path visual not correct between whip spider area and north of it. Okay. Can't remember what that is when we get there. Okay, so now I need to register allies and enter an enemy's nest. Excellent. That's that one done. Okay. Oh, the counterpart colony issue. What is wrong with this? Um. No, uh, no, no, that's right. What did I change on basic marker placement? I didn't, did I? I just put um, break points in.
It's not a bug, just me thinking the passage was a faster path. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I'll cross that one off then. Yeah, no problem. I didn't, uh, I didn't make any changes to it, so. Okay, so counterpart colony fails to change that. Oh boy. So it's definitely this bit of it. Okay, so we made it here. So that's a bit weird. Okay, so form a character species to update, it sets it to enabled. Definitely shouldn't do that. And unit option panel, it sets it to enabled. Really? Okay. the breakpoint anymore. Okay, that's better. So that worked for the others as well? Yeah, that's much better. Okay, that's done. Done. That one's very easy. Colony setup tab issue. Oh, I'll fix that one. Uh. Okay, we st we're getting through these now. Hello, hello, Derexio. Derexio? Good to have you with us. Fixed an issue with counterpart not agreeing options. Replay menu. Okay. So, right, I've got a couple of things on the randomized caverns front that I want to change. One of them's not easy. <laughs> At least one of these is definitely not easy. No longer classed as enemies in the enemies entered register.
Okay, so uh, randomized caverns is dealt with in replay director. No, this is objectives. Okay, so this is the random cavern generator. No, this is the uber spawner. Oh no, this is right. What's this? Oh. Tier 3 point vablues. Nice typo. Uh, Okay, so this actually controls the amount of food generated underground. This is maximum. So an average, this is half. So I wanted to up it 6,000. See, see what difference that makes. So, so normally you'll start with 3,000 food underground. Kevin's more food. Okay. Okay, so this, this deals with the tears of the enemies. The tears of the enemies. I think that's okay. As I said, okay, first of all, so at the minute it's just spawning random seeds. Okay, didn't didn't mean to split that. It's better. Queen species. Okay, so if it's a leaf cutter queen. Instead, go for random leaf chunks.
One sec. Okay, so if you're a leaf putter colony, Okay, so that, that should give leaf cutters random bits of leaves underground. Force an enemy free cavern. Okay, so this one's not going to be as easy as I'd hoped. Basically, I need to try and force there to be some caverns near the player. There's a reason why I didn't uh, I didn't do this before. We come back to chat. Oh, that works on stream Steam. Oh, the function was used. Never mind. It was a reference. Genuine function for function with over twenty arguments. No, this is a it's a it's um it's a structure. It's a structure, and it's just got um. It's basically it's basically got all the. Uh, Uh, it's set up information for your colony. Right, I need to think about this. Okay, so how are we going to force an enemy free cavern? The issue with it is that it picks random tiles to make the to make the caverns in. So I, what I could do is I could make it pick random tiles for a little bit longer. Um, maybe I can get it to pick some tiles and uh, keep repicking until it gets one near the queen to start with. I mean... Problem is, you don't want it to do that forever, so there needs to be some sort of check to make sure if it doesn't find it after a little bit, it just carries on anyway. So where's it? where does it select the random cavern? Here it is. So maybe the maybe it tries first of all with fifth with fifty attempts to get ones that are near the queen. Near Queen Caverns. It's going to be an integer. Uh, it's 
going to start at zero. New Queen Cavins greater than two. Fail near queen attempts. Greater than Okay, so what this will do is, if it if it gets one that's near the queen, great. It it does it, and increases the number of caverns it knows that are near the queen. If it doesn't get one that's near the queen, it checks whether it's already got three that are near the queen. If it does, it will allow this one to be turned into a different cavern. If it doesn't, it will it will not not use this one and instead add one to the failed attempts if the failed attempts are over 50 it will it will allow it to go through anyway so it's got 50 chances initially to get get a few caverns near the queen to start with probably not the most efficient way of doing it but it should work oh Play test. Yes, I should. I, I should definitely run a test. Um, it should be dead easy for me to run the test because I've already got a free play game set up with random cabins selected. So if I go to the level that I was playing, which is embankment. Let that load. Okay, so what's been going on since last week? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna save that so it stops asking me. Um, Liam has moved from free from. Um, from uh, the bridges he's been working on he's been working on a, a backlog of bugs and things that he had to do so there will be a few bug fixes coming uh, he's also up been doing some optimizations as well however I've already noticed a couple of bugs in the optimizations that he's done so that might slow us down here Done some changes to call to arms, but they uh, they've caused bugs as well. In this small corner of the world, the creatures can turn okay, so day to day lives, unaware that a new that looks like it's worked. To rise in the it's underworld. created three caverns near the queen that are empty, and there's even one that's got that's got one individual creature in it.
Okay, that's pretty neat. I'm just gonna run it a couple more times just to make sure. I, mean, I don't expect them all to always to be that close to me. That was quite rare. There's one cavern with one food in. There's Nature another and there's another. Okay, so there's, there's a couple there. Society. But if it meets them, it could rise to become a yeah. true contender for this patch of the underground. One more try trial. There's still a chance that it won't do it, but it's it's now really low. Yeah, that's fine. In this small corner of the world, the creatures okay. continue their Let's cross that one off. Lives, unaware that a new power is about Force to enemy free cavern. Sorted. Uh, Remove bullet points on victory condition. Seems like a weird way to do it, but to be fair. That should do it. I need to do it on this one as well. Should be exactly the same. Yep, that, that is completely unnecessary. That's what we want. Right, so that should do there. Remove bullet point on victory condition. I will just check that. Oh, there's something else. Your team Uber's killed. Your team Uber kills. I just really can't stop touching these glasses. Um, what program are you using? Unreal Engine. So this is Unreal Engine's uh, blueprints. We use a mix of blueprints and C++ in the game. Although I think as we come towards full release we will start turning most of the blueprints any, any that are heavy uh, like the AI blueprints and that into C++. But yeah, blueprints is the is the uh, drag and drop coding system in Unreal Engine. It's not as efficient as C++, but it's it's a lot easier to test things. So we always we usually build things in blueprints at first, then further down the line convert them. We don't they're not all going to need to be converting. Um, let's quickly run that. Just to check. Yeah. This society is in its infancy. Right. 
It must grow quickly if it is to survive. So I've got the funnel webs and the marker, but I'm not going to deal with that at the minute. Liam's made changes to that recently, so I'll get him to look at it. Uh, increase uber spawn with hunter. Okay, so there's already an increased uber spawn rate on hunter mode, but I'll increase it further. I don't think it's very much. Uh, so it sh this should literally be a case of. Um, Okay, so looks to me like on Uber What's the maximum Uber spawn chance? Time since start. Minus the time since the last Uber spawn. So that's just a time since the last time since the last Uber spawn divided by the max time. So over time this becomes changes between zero and one. That changes between zero and one. Okay. Decide if spawning an Uber. Three hundred. This goes between three hundred to one and fifty to one. I think 50 to 1 is actually a pretty high chance to spawn an Uber. Certainly in the later game. So the currently 30 minutes on Hunter. I'm going to change it to 20 minutes. I also want to lower the amounts of Ubers that spawn. I've got to disable colony attacks on Hunter. Okay, so free play setup here. When this changes to Oh, I know what else I need to do. I need to prevent you starting the conquest without enemy creatures, without any enemy colonies. Right, hang on.
disable colony attacks on hunter. They get disabled on domination, I believe. So I want to do that to Hunter as well. Ah, yeah, of course. I, do, I can just do it as a pre, as part of the pre-setups. Um, I'm getting confused. This is old. Uh, domination. Survival. Besieged Hunter. Okay, so you can't attack enemy colonies in their nest on Hunter mode. That's disabled. Okay. Okay, finally, I want to do this. Cannot start conquest. What programming language do languages do I know? Well, oh, most of them are web languages. Uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, Action Script. I think what else I programmed in. I used some frameworks as well back when I had my previous job. Before before we started this business, I was I was looking after a lot of websites um for a university. These various little websites and things. Well, amongst other things, but a lot of what I did was web web based work before this. Taught myself C plus plus to um, to make this game with the help of one of my colleagues. Matt is Matt. Um, Matt's the one that really drove the technical side of this. Helped us get over the early hurdles with learning a new programming language. Well, I know my way around a fair amount of web-based programming stuff. Any tips for a beginner? Um, right. When you're learning, when you're learning programming, it's really frustrating. Um, because you want to be able to create something. And you just can't. But I would always advise learning by creating. So you can go through. T some people work really well with tutorials. Um, 
I, mean, I have gone through a lot of tutorials in my time, but I actually find I do best when I... So you've got to learn the fundamentals. So learn the fundamentals, follow tutorials to learn the very basics. Then once you've done that, think of something you want to do. Don't make it too complicated. Just something like, okay, I want to make this move over here. How, um, and then start looking for how you do that individually. Vast majority of programming, certainly when you're getting your, your, um, your, your gritting your teeth, your, you're cutting your teeth with a programming language, is, um, is looking up how to do it, how to do the individual things. Um, and don't just copy and paste what you see. Make sure you understand what's going on and you can alter it yourself. So if you get the answer to something, take the answer understand it, start playing with it, tweak it, change it. I always find learning through creating is, is, is the best way to do, best way to do it. It's the best way to actually get things to stay because in tutorials you're following them and you, the information just, it goes in one ear and out the other. Um, but if you're actually creating something and thinking about how you would, how you achieve that, look up the baby steps. So look up how do I make, how do I, how do I move an object on the screen? How do I make something move from point A to point B? Then change it yourself and go right. If if changing the x value moved it from A to B, maybe I can move it from A to Y by changing the y value. That sort of thing. Th uh, Adapt to the program yourself. Don't um, don't just follow tutorials. Do follow tutorials, but don't just follow tutorials because it won't it won't stay. <laughs> I mean, we when creating Empires of the Undergrowth, this is the second version we created. The first version we didn't create an Unreal Engine. We create we created our own engine. Now, I say we, Matt essentially is the one that created the engine. But I created the AI systems within the engine for that. It was just one giant switch statement. It was quite horrific to, to, to look at. But essentially then, at some point, in between the first Kickstarter failing and running the second Kickstarter, we restarted in Unreal Engine and things moved a lot more rapidly then. So we failed before we succeeded. <laughs> You're right. You're right, Rempy. Good to have you with us. Okay, I can't remember what I was doing. Um Right, I wanted to make it so you can't start conquest mode without an enemy colony. So I'm going to put an exception. Exception. I'm going to follow the train of thought here. Right, so this is warning text that comes up when you're starting a colony. Now, this is the point where AI colonies are packed, ready for the game. So what I want to do is at this point check that the that if we're playing if we are playing, uh, hang on, victory conditions, victory conditions, victory conditions. There's one of the new things you can pick the uber creatures. Uh, victory, victory, victory. I think victory conditions is a really small section, so. There it is. Okay. So if this is set to Z 
zero one option one it's a really funny way of getting this but selected option get selected option Okay, selected op option is equal to one. If it's not, it carries on. If it is, we need to then do the check to see if we've got So players in the game, if it's one, that's just a player. If it's two, that's a computer as well. So if it's greater than one, we're all fine and dandy and we can go on with our, go on our merry way. If it's not, instead of starting the game, we need to just give a warning. Now, warning... must have an enemy colony to play conquest victory condition sorry i'm just spell checking the line i just wrote always always spell check Unless you're the best typer in the world and best speller in the world, always check your spelling. Ah, the other thing we need to check is that there's at least one enemy AI. Because you could turn Conquest on with an ally. Oh, so many things to think about. This is why this menu's <laughs> taken so long. <laughs> okay. So I can't just check whether the length is greater than that. I've got to go through all of them and make sure at least one. Okay. 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 This shouldn't take long. Um. Okay, so if index, let's just do it is equal to zero. So if index is equal to zero, it's the player's one. So if it's the player's one, oh boy, um, new variable.
It's the players one, restore the players team. Found enemy. It's not the player's one. If it's not equal to player's team, set found enemy to true. Once we've completed the loop, if found enemy is true, we go on our merry way. If found enemy is false, we display the warning. Okay, should we give it a try? Sorry, let me come back to you people. Are you gonna to update Toehead? It's on my list of things to do, is um, take a look at Toehead. The issue seems to be that it's too easy to get completely stuck where you start. Um, so I think the correct thing to do is to move the uh, the ramps closer to the players uh, uh, ramps closer to the players um, nests. So so you've got you so you've got a route down immediately. I think that's the best option. Um, uh, if you don't remember the programming language, then that means you really are at the very beginning. Okay. You're going to update Toehead. Okay. Um, C++ or are they anything about the syntax? C is equal to C++ should be true, right? Um, yes, C++ is just loads of libraries built on top of C, really. Um, so you can you can write C in um, in C plus plus. So I could I could just start writing C code somewhere. Um, what are your plans for skirmish maps? Two versus two, etc. Um, Skirmish is a funny one because we always plan to include it, uh, but the way free play is going at the minute, it it um it pretty much encompasses the skirmish mode now. Now I don't know if this is good. I don't. I'm not sure what we're going to end up doing with it, but I always foresaw a skirmish map being more rigid so in free play at the minute loads of stuff is randomized so the where the landmarks appear where um which enemies spawn all that sort of stuff where they where they walk that's all random in free play um which isn't really conducive to a proper 2v2 or um a proper uh, skirmish so my feeling on the subject is what we will do eventually is um, create either 
skirmish mode for the free play maps where it has set resources and creatures and things. Um, so you know what you get in each time with the map. So the only change is what the enemy colony is doing. That's my feeling that we will probably do. So skirmish will essentially be the same as free play with enemy colonies, only less random. I think that makes sense. Okay. Glasses are driving me mad. <laughs> it, 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 it's here on the bridge of my nose. Because I'm not used to wearing glasses so much, but recently I've found I've had to wear them. And these are new glasses, so I'm not used to wearing these at all. Um, hopefully I'll get used to them soon. It's either that or I'm going to go back to the shop and get them to look at them, see if they can make them more comfortable. Um, okay, let's give that a go. I need to go back to menu update. My wife wears contact lenses. Well, she did. I mean, she 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 used to wear them all the time. And since we've got the children now, I think, I, I, don't, I, th I think she finds it. Often easier to just put glasses on these days. I think if she's going out, she uh, but she's on maternity leave at the moment, so she barely goes out. <laughs> she's pretty much just looking after the children. This society is in its infancy. It must grow quickly if it is to survive. Okay, so what am I testing? I was meant to be opening menu lab too. I do not know why I didn't. Okay, if you want to have a quick look through these other tabs, so there's the basic setup. It's got a couple of other options here. Um, the environmental creatures one, if you change it, it, cha it just changes what's selected here. Uh, the environmental difficulty, this changes a few things, so... Uh, like, if I put it on Insane, I think it changes it to Ramp with Spikes. Uh, it also ups the... The range of... Right, I need to change the amount of movers you defeat, because 14 is ridiculous. I mean, on on medium, it's 11. Really, the Ubers should be um, about 3 or 4, to be honest. Uh Okay, so other than that, we've just got, it's it's all the same options that were there before. The disable entering other colonies is an option now. Uh, something useful as well is the drop downs now tell you as you hover over them, what what the things are. So it's nothing. There's nothing 
there's only a couple of new options been added but it's it's all it's the idea is it's most of what you need to do is in this frame here anyway so if i put this on conquest now it should see so that's set to one versus environment if i try and start the game it should fail Damn it. Oh no, there we are. It succeeded. Okay, so now if I turn on an enemy but make them allied, two versus environment, it still should fail. Yep. If I make them an enemy, it should start. Yep, yeah, cool. Okay. Conquest start without. Cannot start Congress without enemy colonies. Done. Okay. Right. I think I've ticked off everything other than the stuff that I need Liam to do. It's my hope to get this out on the beta branch tonight. Even if there's a couple of bugs in it, I'll, uh, I'll still try and get it out. Even if Liam doesn't manage to get the bugs. Because it'll at least allow people to take a look at it. And give it a proper test. Got a crash. That's a funny one. Is crash. Apparently, tail grid's a null pointer. So, tail grid equals. I'm hoping there's some way of it's requested a tile grid. Annoying, it's not giving me the information I need. It crashed as the game was starting. It's crashed trying to say is point near ant nest. But I can. It must have tried to do it before. Um... 
Or maybe it's... I don't know. But I can build I can build some crash protection in for this, but um don't know whether that'll solve the root of the problem. Wait one second, because the engine's gonna go down. And I'm coming towards the end of the stream anyway, we're hitting that two hour mark. Uh. So here I can just say if the tile grid exists, do do, and do that. Funny place to crash. Anyway, I'm just gonna have a quick. I'm gonna have a quick chat about things that have changed since last, um, last time. So just gonna whiz over some of the commits. Matt's Matt's he's helped Matt helped me put that menu together, the new menu. He did the visuals for it, but he also um. But. He's also been working on the Epic Store stuff again. Apparently it's quite complicated. Uh, where was the... One second, I'm just looking for the last. Uh, so let's, let's look since last week. So last week... was the 18th. Okay. So since last week, Liam removed old behavior tree based conflicting chunks of trail mechanics. Right, so it'll be this that's caused the trail bug that we saw earlier. But yeah, Liam's basically made some changes to how trails work. So ants move more predictably, but clearly he's managed to introduce an issue. Uh, call to arm trails calculations now account for ant loss ants lost to bridges so it's a it's uh, making trails work with bridges a bit better um fix a bug with bridges where deleting the marker would cause the behavior tree problems uh, that was the bugs we spotted last week on stream liam fixed it removed behavior tree bool and the behavior tree reset chunk. Okay, so um, uh, there's been some efficiency savings in ant behavior. So uh, there's there's been some uh, improvements in um, optimization of ant behavior with that. Uh, uh, which includes checks for things like stun and that. So um, when the beta test comes out, keep an eye on things like stun, stun, and particularly if a creature still moves when stunned, it shouldn't, but uh, markers can't be placed in a map that's flooded. Uh, clear caverns now. Okay, so this is me doing the randomized cavern stuff. Move some debug text. Blah, blah. Debug, debug. Random caverns done. Fix for music playing wrong after 2 1. <laughs> it's a really old bug. Added an update. Added in updated free play menu. That was Matt. Yeah. Tempted to make funnel web less expensive. 
So that's um, it's the Funnel Web land, Landmark, but we know that's got issues. Uh, went over the collectible resources. Uh, fix that I did. Uh, player can enter removed. Oh yeah, I I changed some things around um, for some of the options that I, I introduced to free play. You know the options that I've, I've introduced. I've done optimizations with Honeydew. Uh, lingering problem and terrain causing confusion at the tunnel entrances. Okay. Underground. Okay, so there's a, an issue been solved there. Reduced mortar height, arc height. Interestingly enough, added some with editor tra tags. Oh god, I hope they don't break things. Uh, yeah, that's my Uber selection. Yeah, so some bug fixes, some work on the new free play menu, uh, some work on trails is what I'm getting from this. Okay. Some reason, if I install on my win Windows on my PC, whatever. Uh, trial grid before the map is loaded. I'd be requesting trial grid before the map is loaded. Yeah, well, I say I put some crash protection in for it, so hopefully it'll be okay. I haven't seen any spam bots in chat for a while. Hmm, don't know. Might have done. Fleeing harvestman spider can still move when stunned, right? Um, I don't know. It depends if fleeing AI effect is considered um, higher up than stunned. The way the the way the stacking AI the the way stacking effects happen on creatures is it picks the highest priority one. Though I would have thought that stunned would be higher priority than fleeing. Anyway, um, I'm gonna leave it there. I. I won't. I won't be streaming during the week next week. What I'll probably try and do is do a stream on Saturday morning, maybe, or or Sunday morning. So, not this weekend, but the following weekend. So I won't be streaming midweek, but I'll try and I'll try and get a, a stream in at the weekend. Right. I'm going to be. If I don't manage to get this patch out today, depends on how much. Uh, it depends on how much I still need to get done. There's still a few bits and bobs which are annoying me. Uh, but I'm, if I don't manage to get out today, I will aim to get out tomorrow morning. So look for this, uh, the new free play stuff patch coming out soon. Anyway, it's, it's only going to be on the beta for now. I I'm not releasing it fully yet uh, because I still want to do a new free play map and uh, saving doesn't work yet so I don't want to bring it out of beta until saving works with the new col with the colonies which is going to be a difficult one so we'll see anyway thanks for joining me today and I will see you not not this weekend, but the weekend after. So in about just over a week's time. Thanks for joining me. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you later.